Okay, I have set up the uh, video recorder uh, outside my barn, and I'm going to talk into the camera until uh, I run out of uh, tape. I've had McCurdy horses uh, since the early 50s, and uh, have had no other breed during that time. To understand thoroughly all that's involved with the McCurdy breed, a person would have to have spent some time in Alabama because that part of Alabama is different from any other place in the world, I guess. These horses were developed by a family by the name of McCurdy who were large plantation owners uh, early back in uh, the 18th century, after the Civil War and the slaves were freed, most of these stayed on as sharecroppers or tenant farmers on their farms. Uh, they had some of the finest saddle horses uh, anywhere in the nation uh, way back in the 1800s. Uh, they also bred uh, standard bred and owned some famous racehorses of that last quarter of the 18th century and the first quarter of the 19th century. Uh, as these uh, people worked on their farms, uh, they plowed mules and horses. Uh, they had horses of their own which they took and uh, bred to the McCurdy family's stallions. And from that beginning, uh, the black uh, people, former slaves, uh, and their descendants have owned uh, great horses. You can go to an event in uh, Alabama today, and uh, t there are 200 horses there, and uh, 10 of them are ridden by black people. Five of the top 10 horses at the event will be ridden by blacks. After 1935, uh, when the Tennessee Walking Horse Registry was the family bred their personal horses, uh, or at least they registered their personal horses as Tennessee walking horses. And then as time progressed, they bred to big name Tennessee walking horses. And over time, uh, many of their horses had much more Tennessee walking horse uh, genes than they did uh, the original McCurdy genes. What were the original McCurdy's? Nobody really knows. Uh, they were whatever kind of horses plantation uh, era people had. Uh, they kept horses that they could do anything with them. They could plow them, they could ride cattle off of them, they could drive them to buggies or ride them under saddle. Uh, and the horses that they had and kept were very gentle by nature, they were adaptable, they did well at many things. So from about 1935 on until uh, later in the 20th century, uh, most of the uh, old time uh, McCurdy horses belonged to black folks. They kept uh, record of their breeding. And in some cases, they may have lost a trace of a particular uh, generation, but they could always say this horse goes back to Jig's Lion's horse, or this one goes back to uh, somebody else's uh, line of horses, or came out of that pasture. That part of Alabama is known as the Black Belt. Uh, it is known because, I mean, it's called the Black Belt not because of the black people, but because of the color of the soil. It is prairie country, and uh, it was once the bottom of an ancient seabed. And uh, it has a pH uh, uh, identity of about 8.5. It's very fertile, uh, and it's primarily grasslands now. And uh, a lot of those pastures uh, belong to people who will have 10, 20, uh, 25 or more thousand acres 
of land, and most of it is in fence. Some of the fence is falling down. And over the years, horses were released in those pastures and uh, were basically wild. Uh, the man who owned the land laid claim to them, and they kept the, uh, they would round them up into uh, pens uh, during the winter months and cut out the young stallions and geld them and uh, sell them. But mares and select stallions were left there to run wild. Uh, as recently as five years ago, there were still some wild horses in those large pastures. About five years ago, the last of them were called out. But uh, those blacks uh, are master horsemen. Uh, they have a, an interest in horses. They have uh, an affinity with them and uh, they know how to handle them. Uh, their way 